20 minutes before the Titanic sank, Ismay climbed into the last lifeboat. As far as public opinion went, the only honourable course of action for him to take that night would have been to go down with the ship. The official British inquiry exonerated him, but of course no one would have expected anything else. The establishment merely looked after one of its own. Mr Ismay, after rendering assistance to many passengers, found sea collapsible, the last boat on the starboard side actually being lowered. No other people were there at the time. There was room for him and he jumped in. Had he not jumped in, he would merely have added one more life, namely his own, to the number of those lost, was the inquiry's conclusion on his conduct. He would never be forgiven for saving himself and would find himself branded the coward of the Titanic for the rest of his natural life and his reputation tarnished beyond the grave. Ismay's very unusual memorial in Putney Vale Cemetery was originally three stones representing the prow, mast and stern of a ship. The upright slab representing the prow is inscribed on one side with a verse from the King James Version of the Epistle of James 3-4. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about, with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. On the other side is a lattice pattern of curved and straight lines. The central stone, the mast, is a chest tomb, while sailing ships carved on its sides and a compass at one end. There is something crude, almost primitive about the decoration. In The Art of Memory, Richard Barnes says that, on seeing these rough cuts, my first thoughts were of scrimshaw designs marked with blackened cuts on whalebone and walrus tusk. The final stone, the stern, is a stone bench carved with a rough pattern representing plants and a verse from Elizabeth Barrett Browning on the back rest. The little birds sang east, the little birds sang west, and I smiled to think God's greatness flowed around our incompleteness, round our restlessness, his rest. The designer and creator of the memorial was the sculptor Alfred Gerard, whose best known work is the architectural figures on the London Underground Building in St James, representing the winds, which also feature figures by Eric Gill and Henry Moore, amongst others. Gerard had worked on a series of wooden panels featuring golden horses for the White Star Line. Ismay's wife Julia seems to have commissioned the memorial and presumably she had met the sculptor when he worked for her husband's company. She was also buried here in 1963 when a ledger stone bearing her details was added to the assemblage between the chest tomb and the bench.